Hello everybody, this is Surf, and today I am presenting you with sort of a part two of the Beginner's Guide to Stoneworks. I call it the Practical User's Guide, and this sort of centers around my kit, sort of all the software that I'm using when I play the Stoneworks server, like uh, Forge, Optifine, Shaders, the Minimap, the World Map. What people have been asking me about for a long time, but I've been doing college, so it's put a damper on um, the videos but I'm back and I'm gonna tell you how what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and after that I will go into um, some more advanced things that I didn't cover in the beginners guide like how to be good at uh, administration within a nation and sort of uh, ladder climbing and meta meta leadership stuff that you ought to know so strap in stay tuned and let's dive right on in. So like in most videos, we'll have three, count them, three categories. First being my kit, second being ladder climbing, and third being administration. I'd like to preface uh, when getting into my kit, this is not a tutorial on how to get everything I have. This is just sort of a list of what I have. I will provide links in the description of all of the different videos that will give you a tutorial on how to install and enable all of this on your client. Now, a lot of people use the Fabric Launcher for this. I don't. I use the regular old Minecraft Launcher and that works for me just fine. Um, I also use the current version of Forge and the current version of Optifine. And on top of that, in terms of sort of practical mods, I have Zero's minimap and Zero's world map, which are, which are both allowed and sort of enabled on the Stoneworks server. The minimap is what you see in the top corner. It's a minimap, you know what it is. And the world map opens a, an entire full screen apparatus that shows you everywhere you've ever been on the server, allows you to point waypoints, and all of that sort of stuff. All the stuff that you probably really want. I know me, I am a sort of map guy, and Sometimes the making the physical maps, the map items in Minecraft and going around and doing all that stuff can be very tedious and time consuming. But the mini map sort of allows you to just walk without having to check back with the map and make sure you're in the bounds of the current square that you've got, etc. In terms of the shaders I'm using, I am using the current version of Silder's Vibrant Shaders extreme now whatever version that is it's probably not what i have probably isn't the current version i'm using 1.31 but there probably is a update so next is ladder climbing this is that that's what i've got for my kit and of course again links in the description now for ladder climbing like you're in your nation you're participating you're doing everything from the uh beginner's guide and now you really want to get into leadership. You want to get into all of the sort of power plays, the power positions. And what you're going to do is you want to show off your competency. You're going to, want to participate in server and national events. You're going to want to know how to navigate the discords in order to help others. Now, helping others is going to be a real key point here. When you're interfacing with new players and they don't know a lot of people and they're just getting the hang of it, you helping them will sort of gravitate them to you and you'll be able to form a sort of power base that way. When other people are sort of trying to look around and you helping them, they'll, you, they'll look to you as a sort of uh, safe source of information and advice. And if you were that type of person, you could use that to your advantage. I wouldn't say, I would never uh, venture to say that you or anyone watching was the, the type to take advantage. However, it is a possibility. Now, you're gonna to wanna to communicate with those below you, like I've just said, and you're gonna to wanna to communicate with those above you. You're gonna to wanna to communicate with uh, national leadership, um, municipal leadership, local leadership, etc. Now, this will try to, this was gonna put you pretty high up in terms of knowing information, knowing um, sort of what the conversation is like between the national leadership and the sort of international leadership as well. That way you can sort of see things coming. You'll know what your nation leaders are worried about, what they're looking out for, what they like, what they don't like, basically. 
Next, we're going to talk about sort of the meta age requirement. There's no age requirement for anything technically, maybe in your particular nation, but not on the sort of server as a whole. You don't need to be a certain age to get on the server. You don't need to be a certain age to participate as far as I know. However, people are going to be less likely to listen to you if you're like a squeaker. You know what I'm saying? If they feel like they're being led by someone who's older than themselves, I think they're going to be a lot more likely to follow you and do what you say when you're already in a position of power. I mean, unless you're like a jerk and you're not kind to people. But other than that, being, being perceived as older is a really massive boon for anyone who is trying to give orders and sort of project themselves and their authority out onto anyone around them. Secondly, in the same vein, of course, the more that you know or the more that you show off what you know, the more people are going to be okay with doing what you say. If you're doing a lot of um and an on and you're gonna and, and you're trying to like ask a lot of questions whilst trying to give orders, people might be see that as uh inexperience and you're just going to want to try to avoid that as much as possible try to sound sure about everything you say when you're giving orders or when you have the jurisdiction to give such orders make sure it's firm make sure that there's no room for like hey this might not be the best thing to do or this guy might not have the uh the power vested in him to do what he's telling us to do and that's gonna form a lot of mistrust between the leader and uh, the people he's trying to order around. Lastly, in the second category here, frequent participation in national and international channels is key. This is not just participation in events or whatever your nation is doing, whether it be a war or like a building contest or like a gladiatorial thing, whatever. This is participating in the discords, participating in the voice chats, and trying to be as active as possible. When you're a cool guy that everybody knows, that is going to go leaps and bounds in your favor. Just Even if you're in a low level position, um, showing off results, like if, if you're tasked to do something, um, really brag about how well you did it, I guess. No, don't, don't show off too hard, but like show people that you know what you're doing and always be around. Uh, as much as possible, as much as um, you can reasonably be for when these tasks come around and you can you can be there and be the guy to help and then they'll look highly upon you. Another great thing to do is ask about issues to your high officials and use some discretion. It will be prudent, it will be in your favor to practice discretion on what issues you're asking about to which high officials. Take a look at the national officials within your nation see what their interests are, see what they're interested in maintaining or improving, and base your questions off of um, who you're speaking to. You know, tailor your question to who you're speaking to is sort of the advice that I'd give you right here. And through that, they might just ask you for help. They might just say like, hey, I need help gathering materials or I need help building this, will you help me? And you can say, sure. And if you've got any prowess in building, you can start your stuff that way and through this through playing into the um sort of the strengths of your leaders they will elevate you even higher than what you already would and now you have like specializations and friends in the highest echelons of national government moving into our third thing here administration our third category this is a great segue from the last topic which is getting a base of support. You want to use all the tactics that I've given you thus far, whether it be this video or other videos, to make friends with government officials. Um, power through association is not something to be dismissed. If you've got friends high up, they can help you, they can protect you, uh, whatever you need. Also, these allies and friends you make along the way will stabilize your career as well as push it forward. When you've got people in your corner, at high government they can do anything that they can i mean pretty much provided you have the connections you can get out of pretty much anything i remember 
about a year ago, I was accused of um, being a spy for Pagatea in Bardonia, and those um, accusations were more or less dismissed because of friends that I've had in the top of Bardonian leadership. And I mean, provided I wasn't a spy, I wasn't, I swear, but those connections that I made really got me out of that situation, and eternally grateful to my boys who got my back. Also, frequent participation. The more you're interfacing with these guys, the more they're going to like you. This, this next subsection right here is something very technical, and this is bureaucracy. If you are administrating a nation, if you are like sort of a mid-level position, and you're not like the leader of the nation, and you're not just some um, farmer out in the fields, you're probably middle management, you're probably keeping track of things for the people higher above you. And something for this, if you're trying to keep track of populations, if you're trying to keep track of uh, resource management or uh, taxation management, creating spreadsheets is something that will go leaps and bounds in your favor. I saw this with Araka. Now, Araka is going through a rocky time right now. I'm sure you're aware. But something that I really liked about the way they ran their stuff is that they had a ton of spreadsheets. They had pr pr pretty much everyone in a position in their nation doing things within this spreadsheet. Everyone was accounted for. Everyone had their job clearly laid out. And same with their military. They had all this whole big military roster on a Google Sheet. And it spoke to a professionalism that not many other nations in stoneworks have also writing documents and doing these spreadsheets will bring your nation prestige i mean it brought them prestige in my eyes for me just because i hadn't really seen that before and um it makes everything a lot more official it makes everything seem just a lot more well managed than it otherwise would and then do your best to play into um interests of other people such as for example um heavy rp if you're really into the whole role play aspect of the server i mean some people are th just there for the world building some people are there just to watch the world map change and read the national events but some people uh, myself included are really fans of heavy rp trying to um immerse yourself as deep as possible into the server and it's pretty easy to do this while you're playing the game um, but I think discords will go even farther if they cater to this. Like if they have like a section of their discord where memeing and sort of casual chat is barred. But that a lot of people I think will like that. A lot of people will stay as well. If they feel like this is sort of like a, a story that they're playing out for themselves, they will be much more interested in sticking around and completing projects and advancing their own career. Now we come to the playing politics. Now you're sort of near the top or at the top, and now you're kind of dealing with rivals, you're dealing with um, other people beneath you and maybe above you, making deals, making plans with each other, and everyone is trying to increase their influence. This is the time to pull out the Machiavelli tactics. You're gonna to wanna to limit your rivals as much as possible. And this is not to say um, to detract them or to um, badmouth them, really. Don't, don't do that. But just let your own worth shine above everyone else's through the projects you've done, through if, if you're sort of a military person, if you're a fighter, then that works as well. I mean, people are scared of people that are good at PvP, let me tell you what. If you're good at PvP, then people are going to be a lot less likely to try to, like, challenge you because they know you can just trounce them in the sort of 1v1. Uh, I think that intimidates people a little bit, and that moves just beyond the arena. I think this translates to political life as well. Now, s truth be told, there are seldom people who enjoy national politics and PvP at the same time. But they're out there. They do exist. And their administrations, I think, are pretty stable. 
making deals with those around you is going to be pretty pivotal as well. Making um, these friends and keeping these friends when you're at the top is going to go a lot farther, specifically if they are like kind of like the retired type, like they had national influence before and now they're trying to keep it a little bit more chill and they're just relaxing. Maybe they've got a more minor position, but they're not at the top like they used to be. Those people's names still carry a lot of weight and you should, it, it would benefit you to keep these people on side. And just overall increasing your influence, making sure people know your name and knowing that people can come to you. And when they do that, you can secure their sort of loyalty by it, whether it be doing favors or just being a friendly person, you know? But I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found this informative. I hope you found this useful. I will be back soon, probably in a couple weeks, um, once uh, college is over and I'll have um, near infinite free time. But um, until then, I hope to see you next time.